city health care is a disaster. Our government chooses to ignore women's health problems, people with AIDS and the homeless. We have no choice to turn this world into a different age. We will not be ignored. <laughs>
They said they're going to join our march with us. And what does the New York City Police Department do? We were invited to the UN, and you're blocking us from getting there. Such busy work for yourself, ladies. There was an agreement made. What route to take? One route to take? That's right. Right there, man. We go with you, man. Right. Whose public sidewalks? Our public sidewalks. Whose public sidewalks? Our public sidewalks. Whose supermarket? Our supermarket. Money for eggs, no police stay. Money for eggs, no police stay. Money for eggs, no police stay. Women's Health Action and Mobilization and ACT UP are whacked up. ACT UP and WHAM, perfect together. Right back there, the cops that were roughing people around said, this is a violent group. If we have to, we'll start collaring them. Actually, uh, we asked uh, for the sake of safety, uh, which yeah, your right. leaders agreed to, was to go north on 3rd Avenue, which you disregarded, from 42nd Street, come right down 47th Street and have your demonstration here.
punished. We're not going away. And Chief McCabe and Inspector Batista and David Dickens and Mario Cuomo and George Bush. We're going to fuck up your parties. We're going to fuck up your homes. We're going to fuck up your offices. Nations. The response we received is the same kind of. 
much storage. So please, if I can get some volunteers for those two jobs, it would be great. Thank you. For no reason, they just were picking them off. Marshals, I watched two marshals get picked off. They were trying to get people off the street. They were grabbed from behind. Um, about 15 people have been arrested so far. Don't know much more than that. Oh, they wanted us off the street. It was strict trying to scare us off this side of the street. They wanted us away from the UN. I guess that's not a pretty picture. They wanted us off the street. They told us specifically they froze the street, which that's that's questionable if that's legal from what Jean Elizabeth told us. But that doesn't make a difference anymore because arresting people touching the fence certainly is not legal. So they're just working on their own little rules at the moment, it seems. trying to use a little strong arm tactics in dealing with us. They, they know we're getting the upper hand, they know we're getting the media attention. They're trying to scare us into arrest, get us out of the way, take us out of the picture before we can really get to the objective, which is merely to have a legal picket in front of the U.S. Our objective is to have a legal picket in front of the U.S., which is in our constitutional right, and they wanted to stop us. That was why they arrested us, to stop us and to infringe on our civil rights. It was my first demo. Uh, I love ACT UP. Your first demo, they make you uh, a marshal and then you get arrested. And uh, it was real breeze. The uh, people in, in there who were more experienced than I am uh, said that it was like much easier than usual. Uh, I know of four people who are still left where I was being held, and uh, we are worried about them. At least one has, we think, has an assault charge against him, assault of a police officer, and another seems to have an outstanding uh, something. So you were arrested? I was marshalling, and I was trying to get people to go through the um, the barricades as the police had asked. There had been some trouble at one of the barricades, and I was telling the participants in the demo not to touch the barricades or the policemen and um, and they said they pointed a man in a white a policeman in a white shirt pointed at me and said that's 17 and I was arrested what's uh, what's the purpose of a marshal what's the job of a marshal we are briefed before the demo as to what is legal and what's illegal uh, so that if we see anyone in the demonstration we can like alert them uh, if what they're doing is is more dangerous than what someone else might be doing. So nobody told you marshals get arrested. Well, um, no. I mean, I was I was indifferent to that pretty much. Whether they're in, they're out, whatever. You think it was a legal arrest? Arrested? It was obviously not a legal arrest in my in my wonderful opinion. They, how they I mean, how did they treat you? Did they like put your cuffs on too tight? Or do you think they treat you all right? I was treated fine. I was able to, my cuffs were on loose enough that I was able to come out of them, which made it a lot more pleasant for me than some of the other people that I was in the, um, in the truck with. There was one man in our truck who was in considerable pain. They had put them on very tight. We requested many times that they loosen them. They put on a second pair and took off the first pair, but it seemed to have only worsened the situation. They put a second pair of handcuffs on a man who already was handcuffed? Before they would take off the one pair, they put on a second pair. Um, but yeah, I mean, he has marks on his wrist. And the guy goes, where's your handcuffs? For people that are not around, and uh, they said, you could come in here with us. And we started walking in, and they turned to me and said, you wait out here. And I heard them say, you're, uh, you're under arrest. 
and they started walking him, and I shouted, "What's your name?" And he said, "Tony Malieris." And what was he doing? He was asking a question. He wanted to know where Central Booking is, what the information is, what's going to go, what's going to happen to the four people who are at one police plaza. Did he stop anybody? He did nothing. We walked. We were walking, spoke. and he was asking a question. They said, "Step in here." My first thought was, "Oh, it's raining, and they're going to tell us what's happening." Um, I think we have to have a lawyer. Yeah. I mean, we have to have a lawyer now. Nick and I. For what? He wasn't using a ball horn here. I have the ball horn. He, was the whole he just said he was arrested. He for was ball arrested horn. for violation of the administrative code, no sound device permit at 43 M1, also at, at uh, 42 and 5th. I have the ball horns. I personally observed him using the ball horns. Oh, and? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's charged with, he's arrested for using a bullhorn at the demonstration. Oh. After the fact, that we're saying. I'm doing every yes. demo. Yes. Yes. And again, yes. I mean, listen, there's people coming from the Let's not block the sidewalk, all right? You want to demonstrate, sorry, you can demonstrate right behind those barriers there, right? Why was Tony arrested? Oh, yeah. For using a bullhorn at the demonstration. Can you please move behind the barriers? People are coming by. Medication? If your man needs medication, he will receive medication. If anybody needs medical aid, will receive medical aid by the police department. And what's the procedure for that? Call an ambulance. If he asks for medical uh, Anybody that takes medical aid will be given medical aid. No problem. With the medical aid uh, consists of uh, somebody going to his home I'm and getting it out of his... I, I'm not a doctor. I okay, don't know what the so medical aid will consist okay. of. That's up to the doctors to decide. I see. Yeah. Are you real? Tony, who's been doing support and helping people and finding out what's going on inside and hooking up with the lawyers, was one of the main people at the demonstration using a bullhorn. And apparently now he's been taken in custody for using the bullhorn at the demonstration, not for anything that's been done here that we know of. So it's just bullshit, and, and, and they're just trying to, to fuck up what, what's going on here now to, with, with us trying to take care of people. I mean, an hour and a half after the demo, he comes here to the police precinct to check on people, and uh, now he's arrested. That's exactly what happened in our new, new founded police state. Mug shop at No Prince. What do you want to know, David? What happened? I want to know why you were arrested. The whole thing. Yeah, Who's going to see this? Give me a letter. Can you give me a letter? Well, quite simply, I dressed to go to the UN today, and the gates were still open when I got there. And the police were heckling everybody else away, and I just strolled right on through like I worked there. And then they closed the gates. And so I was inside the UN compound <laughs> with an international background. <laughs> and I just said, I'm here, no poster. What can I do? So I go to the fence to say, oh, boys, pass me a poster. And the UN guard raises his baton, the, you know, the effective baton. And so I figured, well, I'll just climb on top. And then the police got me and grabbed me. They put metal cuffs on first. And then they put me in the paddy wagon. And they put the me then they put the plastic twist, twist ties on. So tight, I have souvenirs. I feel like I've been to Brenda Howard's for the afternoon. <laughs> 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 but the cops, then they, then they like, you know, they just sit there for a while and they took us inside and you all know the story. It's really just kind of boring. No disco music. Were you treated well? It was brutalized. Body searched. Cavity. cavity. <laughs> Anal cavity. No, they, make, no, they let me keep my gum and my, and my lipstick and they asked if I wanted to check my handbag. They did, they said, do you have a handbag with you? <laughs> no, I, I didn't have my hair done either, but <laughs> anyway. Um, you were one of the first people arrested. Read about it, my the the second, as a you matter of fact. Who's first? Some know. man named Willie Sandoval, who's being held inside, oh. against his will. How did you manage to get arrested? Did Tim didn't get arrested. Because you were running side because, by side. But because Tim, I guess, turned. He was and inside. I, so I just, well, they're they're closing the inside? they're closing the gates, and I'm thinking to myself, see, if you look fat, like what does Bob Ravsky say? If you look fabulous enough, you can go anywhere. So I just walked on through into the UN. <laughs> I remember thinking, I thought of you. I thought, I can't believe this. I, I, I can't believe this, and I have nothing to say, like nothing to wave. <laughs> and no one ever believed that I was there. <laughs> so you got an arrest. So I guess maybe that's why I got arrested. And uh, now I'm finished with the interview. Uh, for the record, would you like to say what 
What was the uh, most disgusting thing about this demo? The most disgusting. No, no, I don't. Okay, what was the most disgusting She's thing She's a smart gal. <laughs> oh, no, I can't even begin to pick I know. It's just so, the whole I think one of the more disgusting level. things was Tony getting arrested right out in front of the precinct for no reason. Several hours after the demonstration was over. That's what I would, that's my pick. And Willie. And Willie being presumably put through the system, is that true? Yeah, for And assault. being denied his medication, as far as we know, to this point. But we just have to get organized, I guess. Get more organized. Yeah, no, thanks. Oh, can you say for the record what your concern is now? Right now? Yeah. Well, I just feel a little pissed off because, I mean, at the moment, this second, because I didn't get to, um, you know, I didn't, well, for one thing, I didn't do anything, <laughs> you know, arrest-worthy, but also, you know, I wish I could have done something more, you know, visible or important rather than just, you know, sit down and then get asked to get stand up again and then put into a van. <laughs> it's such a waste of everyone's time and money and everything. I just wish, you know, I could have made some kind of statement more. I'm not saying I didn't make any statement, but I, just, I guess that's all. What was your concern earlier about uh, med people needing medication? Oh, those people. Um, I mean, well, there's just one guy, I believe, that needs the medication, and that's that's scary. I mean, because they could hold him, you know, 24 hours or more, maybe. Uh, and, 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 you know, and I want to keep track of them and make sure they're okay. And this other guy uh, has an open violation of some sort that he never took care of. So, see, of course, they're, you know, they're fucking him up with that and holding him longer. And he's very nervous because he doesn't know what the repercussions are going to be. And he's, you know, he's a nice guy. And, you know, I'm very concerned. And also, <laughs> I was ranting while ago because there are no lawyers here. And I think that's really terrible because we just have to have that when we do a demonstration. Some kind of, you know, guidance or whatever, representation. Thank you. Sure, thanks. Be there for a little while if we need to talk to her. There and at her office. At her office. She said she's going to hang out for a while for us. Uh, Gary has it. And um, okay. if people think, it, she, I spoke to like four different lawyers and they all said that there's not much any of them can do. Mm -hmm. But if, if we all think that Willie needs his drugs, then they can call up and say, look, he needs his drugs. Let's just take care of that. But they said that he, he'll probably do that himself. And that's what lawyer, lawyers tell me. I don't know what else to think. You know, I don't know if there's much else we can do. All right, I have a little bit of a follow-up. Mary Garman's phone number is 941. First, maybe some of us want to go to Central Booking and some of us want to stay here. So, uh, is there any way to find out if they're going to be separated, if some people are going to be, if like, Tony's going to stay here? My sense is that we could ask. There's a guy in there that talks to me, and he'll probably... Torres, right? Torres. Torres, if people talk to Kyle, try to be polite to Torres. Torres is very nice, he's very helpful. He'll tell you what he knows. He's not, like, kind of pulling any bullshit, so... He'll, he'll look in the book and tell you what he knows. So that's the person. He's a man of color. All right. So I can, I'm going to go to Central Booking. So why don't you write here? Are you taking Mary's phone number? Uh, Mary's phone, I can write it on here. When you get I down there, Mary's phone number. when you get down there, why don't you just try to find out what's going on with him if he needs his drugs. Just kind of make it well, urgent, he, saying, like, look, a, he has drugs. He needs drugs. He has, he's a PWA. What's happening with that? Is he being taken care of? If he's not, call Mary right away, and she'll call and make arrangements to get him okay. drugs. Well, Todd, he, I heard him say that he can go for the day. 24 hours. Well, that's the, the most that he'll be kept, Mary said. Wow. What about 72 hours? He's, that, she uh, said that, he, I said he was charged with felony assault. And so she said 24 hours at the most. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's what the national lawyer don't said to say yeah. 24 hours. Okay, the other thing that people can do, especially if you're going home and you're going to be by a phone, Matt said, and Mary said, and other lawyers have said, is call elected officials. Call your council person or all the council people. Say, this guy got arrested. He's sick. He, he got arrested for assault. He didn't assault anybody. It was a demonstration. Why the fuck is he still, you know, in, why is he in central booking? Get him out. You know, whatever. Betty Williams is doing that now. She's Betty Williams is doing that, but like I mean, the more you, the more yeah, people calling, it, it can't hurt. It can't hurt. So, what, what, so what, especially what if you name? need to go home and you're gonna say, oh, that, yeah. that's great. Does anybody know where um, John Consiglia is? And that's the other thing. Yeah. If people can find out where John Consiglia is.
Does anybody call this home? I know he's at work today, so if he's anywhere, he's at Somebody just called Housing Works. Where's Richard Deagle? Is called. that where he works, at Housing no, Works? No, no. No, but they know where he Julia, is. Julia, his roommate, I just left a message at her work. I spoke with her. She's going to, and Betty's trying to contact them, too, so I'll do that when I go. Did anybody see John get arrested? Someone, yeah, yeah someone here said they did. Yeah, yeah Natasha Gray. Okay, you know, uh, call Alexis Danzing, because she's the person that had the list originally. Actually, she should be kept informed about what's going on about the people that are still Alexis, in, and, and John Kelly, and John I have their Kelly phone numbers somewhere. Where do you need people more here at Central Booking? Well, I think we should up. I mean, I, I don't... Well, I don't that they're still, three of them are still all here. Right? Yeah, I think so. We, we, you know, somebody could maybe three. go right now and check. Can somebody go check and ask Taurus? So yeah. <laughs> if you don't come back in yeah. 10 minutes, we'll come. Sandoval, it's uh, Willie Sandoval, S-A-N-D-O-V-A-L. And he was charged with assault too, second degree assault. Did anybody see that also? Yeah, there was somebody here who did see that. Witnesses. Did you get their names and numbers? Yeah, Paul, uh, I got someone. their names and numbers. Yeah, Jane Paul has it. Oh, okay. Did anyone call the New York City's the gay and lesbian liaison to the police? Veronica somebody. Oh, that's a good, that's good, good idea. Veronica somebody. <laughs> Veronica, um, anyone Farrow. at the. Vanessa Farrow. Vanessa, Veronica Vanessa. Okay. I, I need to get on okay. somebody. Like so, Vanessa Farrow, are you going to call also? I can, yeah. It, actually, I'm going to stop yeah. by my office, get a directory of phone numbers, and then I'm going to go home for a minute. Oh, great. Okay. So, Eileen, why don't you give me your phone yeah. number? But you're going to be gone. She'll be there till like, 4. I asked us to call his friend, Roberta Shine. She said, I'll be right down. She came down, so I identified myself to her because I called her. And what we had heard out here is that Grego had been moved down to Central Booking. So I wanted to see where that was and what the address was. So she and I walked over to the front of the building, and Officer Fry, or Captain Fry, was there. And this is the guy that, that was, like, screaming at me that I trusted you and you betrayed me and I'll never trust you again and all this fun stuff. Um, he saw, the minute he saw me, he pointed to me and said, you, come here. And I said, I just need to get the address of Central Booking. He says, all right, fine, come inside. So I went inside with him, and we were in the lobby, and then he, and he opened the door to the main thing, and I, and I was like looking at him, he said, just come inside. So I went inside, he closed the door, and he said, you're under arrest for illegal use of a sound, of sound device without a permit. So that's when I said to her, tell him that I'm, I was doing this, I'm under arrest. So, um... So they put me inside. So they're arresting you after the fact? They're arresting me saying. after the fact, yeah. And, and it was obviously a personal vendetta um, that Fry had against me because he had reason to believe in his own demented, warped mind that I had organized this and I was telling people what to do and what not to do. So. Okay. It's amazing you didn't arrest him in the spirit.